What causes back surgery to fail? What is the definition of failed back surgery syndrome? The definition is persistent, new appearing, recurrent low back pain or lower extremity pain following one or more spine surgeries that thought likely to relieve the pain of the lower back. The outcome of a spine surgery doesn't meet the expectation of the patient and the surgeon. The most common causes of failed lower back surgery are we operated on the wrong patient, or we made the wrong diagnosis, or we chose the wrong procedure, we did a poor technique, or the problem came back, or the problem may be progressive or we fail to match the patient's goals with our ability to achieve these goals. So we get unexpected outcome and the patient is dissatisfied. The resistant spine pain following spine surgery is common. It's about 20 to 40%. The patients may have recurrent problems and they may need additional surgery. So complication for this surgery, the recurrence is about 10 to 20%. The new disc herniation will push on the nerve root again and cause recurrence of the same symptoms. But 80 to 90% of the people will do okay with the first surgery. What we really see is patients with low back pain following surgery. And when you use the term failed back surgery syndrome, it means the surgery is performed incorrectly, and that can create misunderstanding. And that term may delay the treatment because it appears that the patient had the surgery and it didn't work. The patient may not go to the proper surgeon to help in the proper diagnosis and treatment. The public expects the spine surgery to be 100% good result. And what occurs in practice is about 75% good result. Collectively, if you see spine patients, 9 out of 10 will get better without surgery. Maybe in 1 out of 10, surgery is indicated. About 7 out of 10, there's a chance of improvement. And in some patients, there's a chance of getting worse. In about 25%, there's a chance of having a second surgery within 10 years. In general, surgery is better for leg pain than low back pain. The absolute indications for surgery are coda equina syndrome that causes bladder and bowel disturbance or progressive neurological deficit. The usual indication for surgery is the patient's symptoms are not resolved with non-operative treatment. In this situation, we need to operate on the patient's symptoms, not the MRI, because the MRI will give you 30% false positive result. To make the correct diagnosis, 80% will rely on the history, and 15% will rely on the physical exam, and 5% will rely on the studies. When the patient has failed back surgery syndrome, it means there is no improvement. The pathology that caused the symptoms is not addressed. And these are the causes that can lead to failed back surgery syndrome. Poor patient selection. It is the most common cause of failed back surgery syndrome. Patient has problems that we did not recognize and we did not address before surgery. The patient may have intrinsic psychological disturbance, you have elevation of hysteria, hypochondriosis, depression and anxiety, abnormal pain behavior. All these factors can lead to poor result after surgery, especially if the patient is on workman's compensation or involved in litigation, or the patient has an unusual expectation. To predict the outcome, the patient will need evaluation, incorporating comprehensive variety of medical and psychological risk factors, which can be predictive 
of spine surgery outcome in about 82% of the patients. The second item is we made the wrong diagnosis. Either the diagnosis is incorrect or incomplete. So maybe we relied on the MRI and the x-rays that incorrectly shows degenerative changes, which is age-related and asymptomatic in a lot of patients. A physician must correlate the patient's symptoms with physical examination and imaging. When they are not aligned, the chance of failure is increased. Failure to diagnose a painful transitional segment above or below an area to be fused may cause the pain to continue after surgery. Failure to diagnose a far lateral herniated disc may result in failure to relieve the leg pain. Failure to address foraminal or lateral stenosis in a patient with a central stenosis may result in continued radicular pain. Number three, the doctors chose the wrong surgical procedure. Operating on the wrong level is the most common error, and the intraoperative radiographic localization in all cases is important. Also, the doctor may have gone posteriorly instead of anteriorly and vice versa, or the doctor did decompression of one site when the patient has multiple painful sites. So, in fact, the doctors are missing other pathology that they didn't address. Number four, poor technique. So you selected the patient properly, you diagnosed the case very well, you chose the proper surgical procedure, but we did a poor technique. We did incomplete decompression, or we left residual deformity, or we caused iatrogenic instability, or battered root syndrome. Number five is progressive disease or recurrent pathology, like recurrent disc herniation, recurrent spinal stenosis, or transition syndrome. Recurrent disc herniation occurs in about 5 to 15% of the time. Half of them occur in a new level or on the other side. Another issue, the stability of the fused segment will increase the load on the adjacent segment and will accelerate disc degeneration. That's transition syndrome. This syndrome occurs in lumbar spine surgery patients up to 30% within 10 years. Patients will have X-ray evidence of segment deterioration. Another similar process occurs with time that's at the sacroiliac joint which occurs after lumbar fusion with the degeneration extending to the sacroiliac joint. The incidence is about 40%. Number six, failure to achieve the goals of surgery. The decompression was inadequate, incomplete, and the correction of the deformity was inadequate or incomplete, or the patient may have a non-union. Not only we failed to achieve the goal of surgery, but there's also a failure to understand and achieve the patient's goals. Our procedure failed to achieve these goals, so there's unexpected, adverse, or unfavorable outcome, and the patients usually don't like that. Another cause, there may be a new source of pain that may not be related to the initial surgery. Detection of the cause of pain may be difficult. If you consider the potential source of symptoms, this can help in directing the appropriate diagnostic study and the appropriate treatment. So look for occult chronic infection. Look for occult non-union or persistent stenosis or alignment that's not corrected. Look for other anatomic sites that can cause similar problems, such as the hip and sacroiliac joint. Making the correct diagnosis is important before initiating any further treatment. Do not do additional surgery based on inaccurate or incomplete information. 
identify the symptoms accurately. Listen to the patient. If the patient says there is something wrong, then there is something wrong. Rule out causes outside the spine, such as neurological disease, kidney disease, abdominal pathology, pain in other joints, such as the knee, hip, and the SI joint, nerve entrapment syndrome, peripheral neuropathy, vascular claudication, all can be impersonators of spine pain. Then identify the specific spine cause. Check the psychological status of the patient. And after you do all this, you can consider further surgical treatment of the patient. The pain can be early and immediately after surgery within a few weeks or intermediate between one to six months or late more than six months. Every attempt should be made to diagnose the complication early and correct it quickly. Chronic pain and disability may lead to depression and anxiety. Stress can amplify the pain. The stimuli that is not painful can become painful to this patient. Patient whose symptoms are out of proportion for the physical condition may be referred to psychologist, specialist in chronic pain before surgery. Hysteria, depression, sleep disorders, and hypochondria are predictors of poor outcome in spine surgery. Symptoms should be severe enough for more surgery, such as disabling radicular or mechanical axial pain, neurologic changes, and progressive deformity. Make sure you assess the vascular disease, the hip arthritis, and assist the patient for peripheral neuropathy. Assist findings of pain behavior, like Waddell signs. Depression is common in most patients with failed back surgery, and it has classic signs, such as sleep disturbance, loss of appetite, weight change, irritability, inability to make decision, motivation, personality disorder. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.